Okay, in this video I'd like to take you through two examples of applications of the lens formula and the idea is to show you uh, uh, how to solve the problem using a ray diagram and then how to solve it using the lens formula so that you can see that the two approaches give the same result except that ray diagrams are limited really by how precisely you can draw the ray diagram whereas using the lens formula there, there is no limitation so it's more accurate. Um, both these examples involve finding um, the image distance which is the distance from the lens to the image but as you know there are three different things in the in the lens formula so you could you could be asked to calculate any of those uh, not just the image distance it could be the object distance or it could be the focal length so uh, let's get straight on with an example here is a converging lens so an object of height two centimeters uh, is placed somewhere. So the scale I'm using in this in this diagram is that one of these squares, one of these red squares, is two centimeters, and and that's in both directions. So the the scale is the same vertically and horizontally. So an object of height two centimeters is placed at a distance of eight centimeters from a converging lens of focal length four centimeters. So you'll see these two black dots. They represent the focal points on either side of the converging lens. How far from the lens is the image formed? Is the image real or virtual? Okay, so obviously we could solve it. Since I've got a ray diagram, we could solve it using a ray diagram. So a ray which is parallel to the axis passes through the focal point on the other side. A ray through the center of the lens is not deviated. So we've got an idea already, and you could add in the third ray. So we've got an idea already that it's about here that the image is going to be formed. So it looks like it's about this distance. But you'll see that really my rays cross about here. So it's a little bit more than two, four, six. Um, sorry, a little bit more than 8 centimetres, 8 point something centimetres we're expecting. 8 point something centimetres from a diagram, from a ray diagram. Let's try the same question using the formula. Now the lens formula is 1 over u, u being the object distance, plus 1 over v equals 1 over f. And there's different approaches you can take to this, but probably the easiest approach is to just substitute in the numbers. Okay, And we're looking to find V, the image distance. So U is the object distance, and that's 8 centimetres. So 1 divided by 8 centimetres plus 1 divided by V is 1 divided by F, which is 4 centimeters. Now the convention is that for a converging lens the focal length is positive so that's that's a four centimeters a plus four. That's one of the conventions with this lens formula. Okay. So if you do this you welcome to do this any way you like. You can do it as fractions, you can do it as decimals, I don't really mind. I'm gonna do it as um, as fractions I suppose because it looks like an easy one so I can change 1 over 4 to 2 over 8 just because you know it's going to be easy so now if I subtract 1 over 8 from each side I'm going to have 1 over V is 2 over 8 minus 1 over 8 which is 1 over 8 centimeters now what you've got to do is do the reciprocal of each side. Sorry, let me just extend this a bit. So <coughs> I don't know how you how you would think about solving this in maths. I would think about just flipping both sides. So one over v is one over eight. One rule you can do with an equation like this is just flip the fractions on both sides, which then says v over one equals eight centimeters over one. Um, so V is 8, or you could multiply both sides by V first, 
so then you'd have 1 equals v over 8 and then multiply both sides by 8 to give you 8 equals v. So th this is kind of a, a matter of prefer personal preference really and also how you've been taught to do this stuff in maths. Um, if you've been taught to flip the fractions then that's fine. If you're going to do it the other way that's fine. But the end result is that v equals 8 centimetres. So not 8 point something centimetres which it looked like from the diagram okay, but 8 centimetres exactly. So this has given us a more precise result. Um, now that, there's another convention as well. From the ray diagram we can see that this is a real image over here. This thing here is a real image. It's a real image because it's formed by real rays of light. Real rays of light that are converging at a point, so it's a real image. Um, however, from the lens formula alone there's a second convention which is about V. If V turns out to be positive, which it does in this case, that 8 centimetres is, is, is a plus 8, if it's positive then it's real. So if V is positive it's a real image. So you could have answered this entire question without drawing a diagram at all and just by using the lens formula. Let's do one more example to illustrate these conventions. So now we've got an object uh, of height 5 centimetres, so now my scale has changed so each of these red squares now represents 5 centimetres is placed at a distance of 15 centimetres from a converging lens whoops, forgot to change that, it's a diverging lens clearly diverging lens of focal length 10 centimetres how far from the lens is the image formed? well look, let's get a rough idea just by using the ray diagram since it's here so a ray parallel with the axis emerges as if it's come from the focal point a ray through the centre of the lens is not deviated so we're just going to have a dotted line here a virtual ray that looks like it's coming from the focal point so our image is going to be about here so this is going to be our image distance which it's hard to say it's a little over uh, what are we dealing with here? So a little bit over six centimeters, six point something centimeters. But again, it's you know we're limited by our diagram. Let's try the lens formula and see what it says. So one over u plus one over v equals one over f. Uh, let's put the numbers in. So v object distance is 15 centimetres. So 1 divided by 15 centimetres plus 1 over V, the thing we're trying to find out is 1 over F. But remember, now this is a diverging lens, the convention is to make this thing negative. So 1 over minus 10 centimetres. Apologies for the <coughs> long pause there, I was just loading up the calculator. So previously I solved this algebraically and uh, you know using fractions and manipulating the fractions, but you don't have to do it that way. Um, you can do it using your calculator. It's gonna look messy, but just to show you that you know there's more than one way to do it. So if you like, you could convert all these into decimals using a calculator. So one over fifteen did that just happen correctly? 1 divided by 15, that looks better, is some horrendous fraction. Okay, I, you, This is why I don't like um, some horrendous decimal, sorry. This is why I don't really like doing it, but you know, that 0 0.06 recurring plus 1 over V is 1 over minus 10. Now you can type 1 over minus 10 into a calculator, well let's just do it. I mean, hopefully it's clear what the uh, answer would be, but 1 divided by uh, minus 10, here it is, there's the minus, 1 divided by minus 10 is minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1. Now, what are we going to do with this? Um, subtract 0 0.06 recurring from each side, so 1 over V is minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.06 recurring, which is going to be Put it again, put it in your calculator if you like. 
minus 0 0.16 recurring. So now, if 1 over V is that, then V is 1 over that. So 1 over 0 0.1 minus 0 0.16 recurring, <coughs> which is, we'll put it into the calculator, so let's just get ourselves, we've got that. You see, this is why doing it as a decimal is a bit annoying now because now I've got to try and somehow put 0 0.16 uh, recurring into a calculator so I'm not even going to bother doing it. Luckily I know what that is anyway. 0 0.16 recurring is a sixth. Um, so if I do 1 over that I should get minus 6 centimeters. So this is an issue for you basically if you're going to do it um, if you're going to do it using your calculator, you need to do it in a way where you can either keep these answers in the calculator or you're going to have to type it in with enough decimal places to make the answer okay. So if I demonstrate this, if I do 1 divided by minus 0.16666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666